Hello and welcome back to another episode of Warhammer 40k. My name is Saiken and today we're continuing the team build guide series where I am having a gem of a team. A highly competitive team that is using stuns in order to uh, get their way and use basically the stun execution mechanic in order to kill enemies. So. The composition that we're going to look at is Paladin, Chaplain, Librarian and Apothecary. Kind of the standard composition I would say for that particular team. You can switch out a few of them, uh, but in the core this combination does the job the best in my opinion. The Paladin's job is going to uh, be to apply as much stun as possible thanks to his perk uh, that allows him to apply one more stun per hit automatically and an AoE weapon uh, that is going to just spread that out to many different enemies. Uh, the Chaplain's job is going to be uh, to support specifically with a Lithany of Hate uh, which will allow to regain more AP when uh, the Paladin is or whoever is inevitably going to execute targets. The Librarian's job mainly is to taxi the uh, people close to the enemy so that we're not losing a lot of time uh, just walking up. And the Apothecary's job is to uh, create a Biomancy iron arm biomancy to be precise in order to use iron arm biomancy on the paladin mainly uh, to give even more stun uh, in the team comp that i'm showing the paladin would hit for six uh, stun per hit aoe which is quite respectable if you pair that with empyrean uh, empyrean uh, brain mines then that can lead to a very, very nasty combination. So let's get into the actual builds. Good, let's look into the actual individual abilities. For the Paladin, really, the only thing that you need, as in need, need, is going to be the stun uh, perk here which allows him to just gain plus one stun for any melee attack that he is doing. It certainly helps to gain more melee damage and um, the hammerhead uh, feature down here as well as uh, the only in death feature are helping the paladin to just overall be more tanky but really the only reason why he is in this combination to begin with is uh, the extra stun uh, i also skilled a tiny bit into uh, the range damage and the mental focus so that we uh, we can have additional options of uh, regaining additional ap but you can skill however you want uh, theoretically you could go into fury of the ancients as well so this is the only thing that uh, really matters as for a loadout i'm running a an uh, interesting armor um, that is uh, going to give us extra damage on our four strikes because we're four striking a lot on top of it uh, focus and just really decent armor it's a very nice one mental of uh, the alec um, which brings me to a general topic with this combination there is just one thing that this combination is uh, bad against and that is non-stunnable targets so particularly uh, demonic targets oftentimes come as non-stunnable as well as bloom seeds so what you are going to do in that specific case is you're making sure that you do have abilities uh, that work against them to simply dish out enough damage and one way of doing that is making sure that you do have a com uh, competitive uh, damage on each of your characters so in this case the paladin comes in with plus two from four strikes uh, pair that with a weapon that is already doing eight points of damage on a uh, crit so we're hitting for 10 points plus the normal uh, four strike damage so it's 11 points aoe which is a really really strong uh, hit which brings us to the melee weapon there are a couple of melee weapons that you can use in order to pull this build off i've gone with pale 
which is a nice melee weapon that uh, opens up the force strike into an area of three that's plenty additionally it allows us to uh, strike nearby enemies and has a very decent additional crit rating there are a couple of other uh, ones that you definitely could look into it blessing of faith uh, as a hammer is a fantastic weapon uh, which by itself will deal four stun damage with a four strike if you add the paladin one uh, onto it that's five if you add uh, the bio uh, biomancy uh, from the apothecary that's eight stun which is crazy for a single hit weapon and then of course uh, Warbreaker that I've uh, showcased in another uh, series uh, which does a very similar thing that Pale does just a little bit larger uh, area area four instead of three point being I want to showcase different weapons which is why I went with Pale believe me it's good enough uh, or great enough uh, would be the right way of saying it so uh, that in itself is good Take any bolter that you want, I do have a high damage uh, bolter on top of it. Moving on to the chaplain real quick, here all you need is the Lithany of Hate. Lithany of Hate uh, gives you uh, multiple uses per round, three to be precise, and every time someone executes an enemy they gain an additional AP on top of it, which is just fantastic. The second thing that you likely want is that extra equipment slot, which is really good, and then I personally went for all of the passive um, uh, passive autos uh, which uh, you don't need to run the lithany for in order to get them keep in mind you can only run one lithany uh, so in this case here melee attack 50 percent uh, chance to gain one ap um, down here 50 uh, percent chance uh, with a ranged attack and those two together can generate up to two ap the lithany of hate um, can generate uh, three additional AP for executions on top of it. And keep in mind, every single execution automatically um, creates four AP. So you will see that we're flooding uh, the um, uh, the AP roster in that. As for the um, Crucifix, uh, we are taking the Manifest Word because it does have an executioner ability in there, which once per turn, if the uh, if, uh, the chaplain executes something, uh, he will get two AP on top of everything else which is absolutely crazy just more AP to play with then we do have the librarian I mentioned uh, mainly a taxi so we want to make sure that we have a plenty uh, full amount of willpower uh, but the chaplain give or the librarian gives a great option for um, uh, for a couple of other things I personally like to build it uh, to here all the way up to the uh, Psybolt support fire. Uh, we do have a couple of other abilities here which are fine and for this team in particular Psychic Shriek is also important so if you build it go for the taxi ability, uh, go for the Psychic Shriek ability and then I would recommend going up to Psybolt. So why do I say that? With that Psybolt uh, gets armor piercing and plus three crit and if you're looking at uh, uh, at uh, their loadout, um, if you take a good storm bolter, in this case I've used dire exorcism, uh, we are actually already starting with five damage. Remember that I said uh, the problematic enemies are going to be demons, so this is an anti-demon slaying bolter. So we're having nine points of damage against demons. Um, Psybolt deals uh, from the weapon plus two damage, plus three from his um, outfit, so it's plus five damage, which means we're rocking 14 points of damage and 100% chance of the demon losing one AP in the next round. Pretty sick, eh? So uh, that will be our way of uh, dishing out a lot of damage. In terms of the melee weapon, you could use a warding staff, but I wanted to showcase yet another good weapon, which is Endbringer. An Endbringer is one of those weapons where you can easily sleep on them until you realize, wait a second, wait a second, wait a second, it has an auto executioner once per turn, uh, two ability points on top of it as well. So. Um, if we want to regain uh, will points and are executing with a librarian, he also gets two AP on top of it if he gets the execute, which is crazy. So both uh, the chaplain and the librarian benefit from one execution per round. Now, um, let's move to the apothecary, which is the last one here. 
Uh, really, the only thing that you want in their ability is the Iron Arm Discipline. Everything else is optional. Uh, the Iron Arm Discipline, fully upgraded, gives you two turn uh, plus three stun on your weapon. Um, and you can combine it nicely with Warp Speed or other ones. But this is really the core of the build. I personally love to grab Terminator Armor. I think Terminator Armor is fantastic. Whenever I do have the ability, I take it. And on top of it, we're going for server skulls. So really, uh, this here is our fallback sol uh, solution. You can use Medikai skulls if you want to. I'm uh, personally rather using the stratagem Tide of Shadows so that I can purify everyone once um, uh, a run at least. Um, and instead take Hailer Skulls, which is the Mimic uh, Beacon uh, solution, really. Uh, with that and extra willpower, we're running at 15 willpower as an armor. Um, I chose uh, this time to use an armor with resistance. You could build it with less willpower and add a passive resistance item uh, to give this guy 100% resistance, so to make sure that he never gets afflictions anyways. Uh, but this is just details it doesn't really matter in the grand scheme of uh, things what matters is the melee weapon there are two that are um, uh, that are good for this build one is trauma self which is uh, a level one weapon uh, with plus one biomancies the other one is life giver that you already know from my other guide since i want to showcase uh, different weapons we're using trauma self and uh, that's really it is uh, the ranged weapon I chose something interesting, in this case Deathmaker, because Deathmaker does have a um, chance of regaining willpower um, on uh, the utilization of Psy Balls and comes in with 9 points of damage. Remember that I said we want to deal a lot of damage um, and really Death Bolt is that kind of damage dealing that we want to do against uh, demons when we do have the time to do it. So. That's really it. That's the team. As a stratagem, uh, we are going to uh, we're going to be using Word of Emperor, um, which will help us to uh, stun from time to time. You could run uh, this whole thing instead of uh, Strength of uh, Spirit, which is nice. Um, also, with Gateway to Infinity, um, will help you to just uh, reduce uh, the uh, taxation on willpower uh, for your um, for your uh, librarian. But um, I personally like just to refill it with willpower. Tides of Shadow is uh, there just in case something goes wrong and I need to cleanse. And then really you can uh, take what, whatever you want. There is nothing um, really pressing or necessary. Quicksilver would be one option. You could go, uh, go for another willpower. You could go for heal if you really, really think that uh, you need it. Oftentimes it's not needed, but you know what? I'll just... I'll just uh, do it. You theoretically do have heal with the apothecary, but it's fine. Um, so the only thing that is really uh, useful is willpower refilling, uh, word of emperor and tide of shadows for obvious uh, reasons. So let's go into the mission and see how the uh, team plays out. All right, so we're in the middle of a mission. We're going to look into how the stun team plays out. The only thing that I did is I activated Lithany of Hate. Could have done that pre-combat and I teleported us in, plus uh, used Iron Arm Biomancy. So I spent already a, quite a few amount of AP. Uh, all of that could be done before the combat actually starts, but I wanted to showcase uh, just how well this team is working. So for starters, we are uh, going to um, start with stunning uh, the enemies as much as we can. The Empyrean uh, Brain Mine uh, deals five, and you can see we got five, two, and two left over. Then we are simply going to move in all the way to here and are four striking so that we're hitting all three of them as a consequence of it. You can see that we have automatically stunned two of uh, these guys. And this is where we are starting slowly but surely to regain our AP by A, executing one of them. This guy here is uh, very close uh, to another uh, stun, so we're just going to cybolt him. And we're using our weapons that give us extra AP um, on kill. 
So, uh, we do have one with our chaplain, who is going to move in. We could uh, extract the seed for it, if we execute this guy. As we're executing him, you can see we have moved up from 2 all the way up to 5. And we're, by the way, back to 4, 5, 4, 3. But that's not all. Uh, we can uh, continue to move up with our um, librarian. He does have a weapon. He does have a weapon that uh, is generating additional AP as well. And you can now see uh, he's back to 6. Now, for the others, um, I tend to try to hit the ones that have... Um, I try to spread out uh, the hits so that we're not killing them accidentally. You can see a single hit here would stun him, but uh, we are at that point where he anyways only has two uh, stun left over, and that's where you can use, for instance, bolters with extra stun in order to uh, drive that point home. So, moving to here. And by the way, with all of those AP, you really don't need, as in, uh, our force to stun. Uh, it's just a nice little extra me uh, mechanic. And you can see, um, we could, again, execute this guy. Nicely triggering. And at the end of the day, after everything is said and done, we left with around 20 odd uh, action points. And we're going to move right to the next uh, team. So bear with me and I'll uh, showcase the next. All right, we're in our second battle. So I deliberately used Gateway to Infinity in order to not make it about uh, the librarian. Uh, he's still sitting very comfortably on a high amount of um, of uh, willpower. I wanted to start with two each uh, in terms of uh, action points and showcase that this team still can very much uh, be competitive. You can see that uh, the Nurgle Beast as well as both of uh, these Plague Bearers are stunnable. On the other hand, some other um, uh, enemies such as Nurgle Swarmlings um, are not. Same goes, by the way, for bloom bulbs and uh, these little bloom mali malignant growth items. Nonetheless, we can win uh, that entire turn by following the same recipe or formula. What we're going to do is we're applying stun. Stun is a concept that only applies to enemies. Therefore, it doesn't matter that we're in the uh, grenade radius. And you can see that we've already gotten these guys down to two. Uh, which now gives us the option to uh, have a non-empowered uh, warp shriek. There you go. Stunned both of them nicely. And now it's the time for a cleanup. We're starting with uh, executing it again. Since we are in the same turn, uh, the... Uh, execution bonus uh, AP from executions are not as strong so keep in mind that uh, a lot of the bonus AP from execution comes from weapons and comes from the litany of hate the litany of hate triggers three times per turn and you when you're teleporting on and on and on that still counts as the same turn uh, and the cooldowns do not refresh uh, so we're going to use uh, we're going to use our hammer, and I would like to use it uh, with a force strike, uh, but I'm trying to optimize where we're striking. This here is perfect. Um, one into two, and you can see we've killed all three and stunned the beast of Nurgle. Absolutely phenomenal. Um, in order to progress that uh, forward, let's use our apothecary for the execution. 
good. And you can see we're nicely uh, protected against afflictions. Um, we're optimizing by never leaving um, leaving a strike untaken, as in we're moving in as far as we can with a strike and not double move, uh, not double moving in. And you can see that with uh, two four strikes, not only are all of them gone, but we're almost done with uh, this guy as well. One cyborg shot. And we're ready for a nice little execution. There you go, problem solved. So, you can see that we started with two each and we ended uh, with uh, 17 AP and killed every single one of them. So that is how strong the stun team is. Even the non-stunnable targets um, will take damage from, uh, for instance, the AOE um, that we're using. And there are ways of just dealing with these um, creatures as well. One of them, for instance, is um, uh, having, having the right bolter. I've, for instance, uh, taken uh, the extra anti-demon bolter on uh, the librarian because with that we have a solid 10 points of base damage and crits would even bring it uh, further up. So the creatures that are immune to sun, typically demons, um, can still be easily taken uh, care of. And if you add to that uh, void uh, uh, storm a couple of uh, grenades and just overall damage, then you're going to be more than fine with the team. I hope you enjoyed it. If you like the stun team, leave a comment down below. Tell me how you like uh, the mechanic and let me know what you think. Are you going to try it out yourself? Take care and see you in the next guide. Bye bye.